Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at lead code problem and the problem's name is this subsequence. So in this question, we're given two strings s and t. We have to return true if s is a subsequence of t, else we have to return false. So by definition, a subsequence is a string that is formed by the original string by deleting some of the characters without disturbing the relative positions of the remaining characters. So it doesn't have to be contiguous but the order of insertion of those elements should be same. So A C E is a subsequence of A B C D E because A is appearing first, B is appearing second and E is appearing last maintaining the order of insertion in the original string. So I've taken the same example as example one. So here as you can see A B C A B C is maintaining the order of insertion. So S is a subsequence of T. So we return true as the output. So to solve this question, I'm going to iterate through the T string, which is the larger string from left to right from the zeroth index till the end. And I'm going to place a pointer index pointing at the zeroth index position inside the string s and i'm going to check if the character at index is equal to the character at the index i using a for loop if both are same i increment index since a is equal to a i increment index and i'm going to check if index reads the end of the length string s before this for loop ends and here also i'm going to increment increment i check if both are same no so increment i check if both are same yes both are same so increment index, now increment i2 in the next iteration, i will be pointing here. Check if both are same, no they are not same, increment i. Check if both are same, no they are not same, so increment i. Check if both are same, yes both are same, so increment index. And we reach the end of the for loop inside the string t. And this condition has passed, length of the string is 3 and index is also pointing at the index position 3. So this condition passes, so you return true as the output. So inside the for loop itself, you have to check this condition for every case using an if statement. Now let's take the second example. We check if the elements at index and i are same. Yes, they both are same. So increment index. And in the next iteration, i will move forward. Check if both are same. No, they are not same. So only increment i. Check if they are same. No, they are not same. Check if both are same. G and x are not same. Check if both are same, both are not same. Check if both are same, x and c are not same. We reach the end of the for loop of the string t. This condition index is equal to 1. So this condition has not been passed. Length of string is 3 and index is at 1. Since these both are not same, you return false as the output. So here as you can see, false has been returned as the output. Now let's implement these steps in a Java program. So here I'm doing a base check. If s is equal to null or is empty, you return true because empty string is a substring of the original string t. I'm declaring an index variable which is pointing here inside uh, the string s and I'm using a for loop to iterate from left to right inside the string t. So I will start from here. We are comparing the character at index and at i and in each iteration we are checking this condition if index is equal to length. So this condition will be checked in each for loop. So whenever this condition satisfies, you return true. If this condition is not satisfied or true is not returned until the for loop ends, you come out of the for loop and return false because this condition has failed for that test case and you return false. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n where n is the length of the string t and the space complexity is constant O of 1 because we are not using any extra space. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.